to give the go-ahead for the station to start working. However, protesters were forced to declare they were acting in good faith with no foreign financing. A small amount of money that we need comes from our own people. The fishermen contribute a part of their catch every once in two weeks. But not everyone quite bought that. India's prime minister accused western states of derailing India's nuclear program. The atomic energy program has got into difficulties because these NGOs, mostly I think based in the US, don't appreciate the need for our country to increase energy. This protest is not a one-off. Rallies organized by non-governmental organizations targeted other projects in India. Mining was also hit by unrest, leading to multi-million dollar losses and severely hampering development. And you provoke the local tribal or people who are in the interior that these people are coming to extract your resources and they will take it away and you will not be given anything, you will all be deprived of all these things. After, once they provoke them, then they organize demonstrations. U.S. officials have been staunchly denying all allegations that Washington had a hand in stalling projects in India. But experts say this has been a tactic employed by the State Department for more than a quarter of a century. Uh, so the State Department and the Agency for International Development spends uh, hundreds of millions of dollars each year to fund a series of NGOs which are, they're not non-governmental organizations, they appear as that, for organizations that supposedly promote democracy. That's their official line. These NGOs really are the tip of the iceberg, or very often they are a visible portion of a larger agenda of the United States and of the Western powers or of transnational elites. He is going to follow the same patterns that we've seen um, uh, elsewhere around the world with this NGOization. But the Indian leadership is clearly concerned about these prospects. The last known data on the financing of Indian NGOs was published in 2011. Back then the government established that 22,000 organizations had received a total of more than $2 billion coming from abroad, 650 million of which allegedly came from the United States. This year New Delhi has yet to publish such a report, but government sources claim that nowadays this funding has dwindled to almost nothing. The bank accounts of more than 700 such organizations have been frozen and legislation against foreign agent activities has been toughened. And while activists bristle over what they believe to be a suppression of freedoms in the country often described as the world's most populous democracy, India's economists say that numerous vital projects, including the Kudankulam nuclear power station, will now get the green light. Alexei Roshevsky, RT. Now in France, a nuclear plant security is becoming an issue. Anti-nuclear activists have broken into a plant and demanded its closure. The country derives around 75% of its power from nuclear energy. 29 members of Greenpeace used a ladder to climb over a wall of the Trikistan plant. The activists displayed an anti-nuclear banner. Greenpeace said that it only took the group 15 minutes to enter and that the action exposed security flaws. The group called for the plant's immediate closure because they say some of the reactors are cracked. Police arrested the protesters. The French government says that it has asked the plant's operator for details on the breach. Government officials say they are considering tougher penalties for intruders into reactor sites. Activists have launched a series of entries into France's nuclear plants. They've stepped up their campaign since the accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi plant in 2011. A Japanese manufacturer is being blamed for supplying faulty nuclear power components to a U.S. utility and failing to fix them. Officials from Southern California Edison say they have sent a demand for compensation to Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. They say defective steam generators forced the closure of their nuclear plant. The San Onofre plant suspended operations in January last year following the discovery of excessive wear in the pipes of the generators. The operator decided last month to shut down the plant for good, judging it would never be profitable. The letter says Mitsubishi was supposed to make repairs immediately but failed to do so. It says this was a grave breach of contract. Officials from the utility did not mention the size of damages they are seeking. They say they will record a loss of about $450 million to $650 million due to the closure of the plant.
notice how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing? Victims of the Fukushima Daiichi disaster are school children. About 160 children who were forced to flee their hometown have held an event to mark the end of their school term. The students were evacuated from Okuma town to Aizu Akamatsu city some 100 kilometers away. Their former home now stands within the restricted zone around the stricken plant. During the ceremony, students looked at photos of events held during the term, including a concert of Japanese music staged to lift their spirits. A school official told the children they, would, uh, they should always feel a sense of gratitude for the support they are receiving. Around 160 students from Okuma town are enrolled here, about 75% fewer than attended their old schools before the disaster. I will miss seeing my friends, but I will make new friends at the new school. Enrollment is expected to fall even further as families attempt to rebuild their lives in new communities. Some of the most vulnerable 